today's event and coding recital. Uh, we are very much honored that we are joined today. Office in Binguet, Department of Education or Cordillera Administrative Region, and of course, our fellows and executives from Kaisipan Incorporation. I am Bianca Anglo, and I will be your moderator for today. I'm honored to welcome you once again to the project of Layer Tech Girls Code. In encouraging more women to be in tech field, uh, Layer Tech, in partnership with Kaisipan, uh, launched a Girls, Girls Code program to encourage young girls to learn about coding and more of technology. Each Kaispan scholar was given a full parallel coder learn to code package, complete with character goodies, and a learn to code coders handbook, activity book, a free shirt, and even stationery. Included in the package are free access to the two courses in their uh, learning portal, learn to code for beginners, and learn to code uh, in Python. Both courses are self-paced and e-workshop courses with certificates. And for today, we will be we will actually see the output and witness the experiences of these scholars in the Girls Code program. So before we formally begin, um, I would like to invite Ms. Lorene Likagan, an education program specialist in the Department of Education, for a short message to the girls. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, first off, thank you very much for having us here representing the Department of Education, Cordillera Administrative Region on this um, uh, very amazing endeavor. So let me start with this challenge from Abate. Computing is not a field women are newcomers to, when in fact it is a field where they have a history and belong. Now let us get this going. Let us address the two words waving us on the get-go of this invitation, girls and code. The first one, girls, female, women have been astonishingly overperforming for years, but mostly behind the limelight or were not provided the right amount of recognition, the right amount of light to shine and be recognized. Come the modern times, like these times, where we can proudly grab the torch, climb every wall and find ways to show the world how we can shine among our counterparts and be able to conquer whatever we wanted to. Going back to the world, girls, this opportunity not only focuses on gender issues, but also addresses challenge on technical vocational education. It presents another road for girls to take, to pursue more about their calling and opportunity, more about their purpose. It can be seen as a concrete opportunity that does not degrade a student who wants to focus on skill and knowledge development on a certain specialization. It shows a bright future for endless and boundless opportunity for young creative girls like Isabel Se who at 13 was able to establish her own company and influence others, other girls to code. Now the second word, code. It is usually dominated arena as we assimilate it with technology and computers. But if we go more and rewind backwards to when programming were introduced, we have heard of that lovely name, right? Type one in the chat box if you can recall the name of Ada Lovelace, who were, have worked with Charles Babbage. The women, unnamed women who figure out the software part of the first um, and enormous computers. They are told, we, uh, people are told that they are models for the computers, but they have names. They are Fran Billas, Betty Jennings, Ruth Litcherman, Kay McNutty, Betty Snyder, and Marilyn Westcott. They were the first women programmers who were able to break the gender bar barriers, thereby inspiring a due recognition for women and girls in the computing arena. Them being empowered women, manually and patiently searching for the faulty wires, creatively repositioning it to be able to adjust to various conditions expected during the war, the trajectories, the wind, among others. Now fast forward to the present, the younger generation now living in a heavy technology driven environment where the usual identify a computer in this room is already a boring, it's boring statement. Because the grade schoolers understand um, as consumers, they understand it better. They know that a microwave on top of the counter is a computer and banking on this knowledge, why not make them creators instead of just consumers of computers? Their age level posits a higher level of curiosity as compared to an adult if we speak about the digital um, matters. They are more optimistic to find ways to address that curiosity and eventually become agents of change. So girls, they are naturally creative and 
if given an opportunity to be trained as early as they can, as you have been now, you can open more doors, create and code to address more curiosities and influence others to do more. So in coding, opportunities are endless as compared to being a consumer. In the workplace and in real life, we deal with numerous situations that make us calculate the possibilities to decide accordingly. So coding is actually simple. If Even when we were babies, not totally recalling my own scenario, but witnessing my little kids when I introduced the food serula. If it feels yummy, then swallow, else puff it out. Or the other way around, as the kids got bigger, if the food is green, drop it, else eat. So coding is actually simple, creative, funny, boundless, and amazingly enjoyable. Being in this field prepares our resiliency. It is not just learning the code, but training us how to respond and adjust to various situations. We are trained to foresee possible glitches, errors, and barriers. No matter what tool we use, we learn beyond that, making us able to use any tool to build what we want to achieve. So there, um, as I'm saying a while back, um, coding is um, applicable to real life. If the forecast predicts rain, then bring an umbrella, else just leave. So as an adult engaged with data analysis for a decision making, I wish to have started earlier. But way back when we were students, there was no opportunity like what you have today. So fast forward today, yes, my bug is huge because on top of my girly things, I get to carry around wires, screwdrivers, testers, among other technology tools to be always be ready with technology stuff. I create my own tweak application to make my life easier, leaving the redundant, rotinary, computation, graphing, filtering, categorization up to my simple productivity formulas. So with this, I can concentrate on um, understanding the result, building more um, relationship among the data to improve the depth ed teaching learning process. So this goes to show that no matter what path you choose, you will always go back to your first choice, your first love, your first shot of making a change for other people, for yourself. Having the opportunity to start earlier, grab it and hold on to it. Your creativity will soon address various disruptions. Being a girl who code is indeed a life-changing opportunity. So being a girl does not build a wall, but rather open more doors to other girls who may want to follow your footsteps. Remember the names that I have given you a while ago. They are amazing coders in the early times, and there are a lot of them in the modern times. Let us join hands and show the world what we can do. Good luck and good bless for your future and divorce, um, girl coders. And of course, we really thank all our sponsors, um, all the uh, who are sponsoring this type of opportunity for our young children. Thank you very much and good bless. That's all, Pop. Back to you, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Lorraine, for those inspiring remarks. And next one, I would like to call on Ms. Judy Ann Santa Sirzuela for an inspiration talk on Yes, You Can. Hello, good more, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Judy Ann. It's an extreme honor for me to be here. It's a privilege to be among young, talented women who are very much wanting to change and make a difference in the world. I think that's one of the reasons why you all joined this program and why this has become an important part of your beginning in your life. So I'm gonna make this talk very informal. If you have questions, just pop it in. I think I have a, a 20 minutes for this. So right now I'm actually in the Philippines. I'm normally living in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Um, I thought this was going to be live, but it, it's not. And I'm still, uh, I'm still very much excited to present. So I prepped something for you girls. I hope that this talk is something you can use not only in your life in coding, but also in just your normal life and how you would approach things. I'm gonna share with you my experience from our development teams, my experience from the people I have coached who are founders as well. So the next slide, please. So first off who I am, I'm, I'm Judy Ann Santos Shershua. So I'm not Judy Ann Santos Agoncillo. I know everybody's asking me that in the Philippines. Uh, my primary identity is I'm a mom. 
I'm a wife, a daughter, a sister, and a friend. And for your life, it's always good to have a primary identity, the things that truly matter and that you hold on to. And sometimes it's your vocation and sometimes it's your relationships. Outside of that, I have secondary identities. I have been a corporate veteran and a corporate leader of 20 years. I've worked mostly in corporate roles in Nike, Europe, um, Middle East, and Africa, and in AP Moller Maersk all over the world. In coaching, I'm a leadership uh, coach and executive coach. And right now I'm working with Nike European headquarters, Better Up Global US, and the European Mentoring and Coaching Council to really work on the culture of work. So how do how we work, how we approach work, and how we want to transform the future through work. Outside of that, I think the work of my life is being a startup founder of both Hero and Be Hero App Services and Betsy. And these are two um, apps that we have started in the Philippines. They both seek um, to have lasting social impact within the Philippines. So that's me. Next slide, please. This presentation is actually composed of three things. I don't know if you remember when you were kids. Well, you're still quite young, but I'm not so young anymore. When we were kids, we were told you have to always have a complete balanced diet, right? You have to have go foods, carbohydrates to keep your energy up. You have to have your grow foods um, to make sure that you build the right muscle, the right strength, proteins. And glow foods are things that make you really glow, make you strong, make you resilient. So my talk will be around the same nutrition you should have in your life. Go grow and glow. So the first thing that I would like to pass on to you, um, my dear young women, is first, you have to go and you have to go with courage. And courage is an extremely important value. My own journey of courage and how I've manifested it is I've gone out of the Philippines 20 years ago and I have started my life in Prague in the Czech Republic. Every time I am offered um, to go further, to go into Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary, I did it. I just grabbed the opportunity. After that, I was taking care of Europe, and after that, of Central Europe, and then I started taking care of the whole of Europe in commercial strategy, in transformation, in, in SAP implementation all over Europe. I have um, a favorite quote from Maya Angelou, which says, courage is the most important virtue because without courage, you cannot, you cannot practice any virtue consistently. If you have an idea, if you have a feeling about something that would help others, do not hesitate because that is inspiration coming from the universe or from God or whatever faith you have. That is an inspiration. That is an opportunity for you to go out and let them experience what you have to offer. So always have courage and always have that supported by faith. So that's the first thing. Now, a lot of people ask me, okay, courage, but have you ever been afraid in your life? I, have, I am afraid every day. But courage doesn't mean not being afraid. It means that What's important about it is what you do with that fear. And if you take it as an invitation to rise, it's always going to be good. So there is the right way to be brave. The next slide, please. So what is the right way to be brave? I've worked with young women, young developers, um, founders as well. And I always tell them in the past, we are always appreciated when we can follow. But I always appreciate people who work within tech teams, who can think for themselves, who have an opinion and who have a point of view, but also know how to listen. You have to listen, one, to your customers and two, to your colleagues. Listening, in the past, you always had this product development system and the product development system within startups means you first take your product, build your product, and then present it to the customer. And this model has failed many startups. Right now in the startup world, what you have to do is use the customer development system or customer development approach or methodology, which means that you don't create the product without your customer. Learning to listen is an important part of building anything, not only apps, applications, software, or anything else. It's an important part of learning for your teams or for you when you are part of the team. When you are part of the team, you should always learn to speak up. 
And speaking up doesn't mean being rude or arrogant. It means that you try to do it, be upright, and treat each other with, with respect. And the next, the next thing that's very important to me is that whatever you do, you try new things purposefully. Do not try to fill up a bucket list and try to put on all the features in the app that you need or that the customers want. You have to know why they are there and if they would really help the user experience. The next thing is stand up for what's true, what's kind, and what's good. And that's extremely important in anything you join, you do, or you put your um, footprint on. So make sure that you make this part of how you live and how you choose um, apps to join, organizations to join. Know that there is no real failure. There are only learning moments, but you don't fail for the sake of failure. You fail for the sake of learning. And if you learn to fail well, that happens in all the startups that I've, all the founders that has happened to all the founders that have coached, you would see that you have created an app and then realize the user experience doesn't work or the business model doesn't work. And then you would have to pivot. Sometimes it's not about, um, the fact that you have put in the wrong assumptions in your product, but sometimes it's, it's about the speed of the technology that is around us right now. Sometimes it's not even your fault. So don't ever, ever take failure as something that stops there. You have to learn from it because that will build your resilience. <laughs> yes, you can have Betsy t-shirts. <laughs> All right, I'm wearing a Betsy shirt right now. That's one of the startups. All right, the next slide, please. Now we talk about growing. So this is about the building your strength. And what's important about building your strength for me is a lot of young people right now, they think that you have to find your passion. And I always say, it's not like your keys that you misplace that you have to find. Your passion is something you create. It's something that's inherent in you, but you have to create something out of it. Try to find projects, applications, startups, or companies that resonate with your own values. And you would only know what your own values are if you are constantly reflecting on what your personal mission is. What is personally meaningful to you and resonate with you? Know though, that even when you have already reflected and understood your mission and understand that, okay, this organization is resonating with my values, I'm happy with it. One day you might feel like, oh, maybe I have a different dream. Know that that's okay. That is very much okay. Everything that is good takes time. Um, right now, you guys, you all have your phones and when you're hungry, you just call someone and somebody comes in with your food. When you need to find somebody uh, to be with, then you have an app for that also. You can find a relationship online. That's, that's just how the world works right now. But what you guys must remember is that in my own life, what I realized in my journey is that true job fulfillment is composed of, that's my lifeline that's this year, it's composed of ups and downs. That means that in your own life, you must be able to understand that if you want true job fulfillment, if you want to be an expert, if you want to find real lasting relationships, you have to be patient as well. You have to be patient and compassionate with others who are learning with you and with yourself also. Your goal as, for example, if you, have, you become a founder or you become part of a development team or you become a product owner or something, something else in a leadership role in a company, your goal is to make complex things simple for your clients. That will make you appreciate the difficult. And I find a lot of young people right now who leave jobs just because they feel they're not happy in the job. Of course, it's different when you're being mistreated in a job, but you have to realize 
that you have to work on yourself and you have to work with people and learn from people constantly. And those things take time. You cannot just order job fulfillment. You cannot just swipe right and you're going to find the right person for you. Those things take time. So make sure that you, uh, when you find something good, you hold on to it for a while, you work hard for it, and realize that some things will mean patience, something will, some things will mean resilience, and some things will mean a lot of grace. And that's okay. You will be guided with your, with your intuition as you go, whether you need to leave or stay. The next slide, please. Then the last bit that I want to leave with you is the part around glow. So this are when, you, when we related to food, right? It's vegetables, it's fruits. For me, glowing is about having that happiness from within with what you do. Sometimes we achieve it with, you know, if you know positive psychology with uh, Martin Seligman, he's, they have a, a study with the University of Pennsylvania when they quantified where we get our happiness. And our happiness is gotten from three, from three sources. One is the most, let's say, the most temporary. And that includes status, fortune, money, fame, or even personal relationships. Why? Because you always have a step to go up. So that means that when I have a boyfriend, then I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to want to marry him. After that, I'm going to want to have kids with him. So you, you're increasing your expectations. And so that happiness is temporary. The second source of happiness is flow. That means that everything disappears when you're doing something you're passionate about. And that gives you more happiness, actually, than your personal relationship sometimes, or status, or money. The third part, the third Thing that gives you happiness and the one that truly sticks is meaning and meaning is only possible when you're doing something in service of others compassion meaning those things they're very hard to um, quantify but know that they are an active word they are not passive rhetoric in my life what I have done I have been living in Europe and I have been leading big teams and coaching leaders and executives for more than 20 years now. But I still realized that I want to go back to the Philippines and share what I have learned. Hero, for example, was built in our, so I have partners also in this, um, in this app that we started, in this um, company that we started, Startup. And we were all looking at our own lives. How do we want to work? And it's the same thing that we want to give um, Filipinos. We want to give them opportunities. So what Hero does is not only uplift the professional dignity of the skilled Filipino worker, it also democratizes work and talent. Because we believe that if people have this, have the opportunities to grow and appreciate their lives and appreciate themselves, then they can have better lives uh, they can dream of better lives for their children. Betsy, on the other hand, is an e-commerce site where we want to focus on less consumerism and we make special possible for every Filipino. In this way, we also help our creative entrepreneurs showcase the, their talent. So when you, when you talk about glowing, you talk about in, inner happiness flowing out of you. Every time you do that, you don't realize the impact that you have for people, not only within your circle, but beyond. And that for me is the greatest, um, the greatest happiness you can achieve. And it is truly through the work that you're doing with coding. Every code that you write, every team that you're able to lead towards a new tech, for example, every effort counts because we are needed not only by the Philippines, but more by, by the world, by even more countries. What you're doing now, what you're starting here is an excellent thing because you have activated your courage and will to do this. You have decided that by growing together with women, young women like you, you are also supporting each other. You're building a community. 
And I hope in the future, everything that you learn here and that you will learn in your career in coding, you will also want to give back to your fellow men in the Philippines because it is extremely needed. Pay it forward. Congratulations to every one of you. And I hope to see you somewhere in our careers. I hope that you get fulfillment, that you have patience for the right things and that you always, always keep in mind that what you have now is not just yours, but it's also for others. So thank you so much. I wanna leave you with one last um, quote, which is very important to me. And I always say this in every talk I, I, I do. This is extremely powerful for me because I realize it's not always about just me. If you want to inspire others, don't show them your superpowers, show them theirs. Thank you so much. I'm Judy Ann and enjoy your recital. Thank you so much, Ms. Judy Ann, for, for, for inspiring us and definitely sharing um, your story with us. Um, we picked up like a lot of lessons uh, from your presentation. And the next one. And now for our next speaker, um, she's the founder of Layer Tech and the founder of actually the Girls Code program. We have Ms. Frey Samuel to give us a talk on why girls should, should be encouraged to learn how to code. Ms. Frey. Hi, um, hold on. I'll uh, share. I hey, wait. Can I, can I share my screen? I can't, oh, yeah, I can pala, sorry. Uh, hold on, advanced a portion of the screen. Hold on. There we go. Ayan. Can you see my screen? Yes, Pa Kita. Yes. All right. Ayan. So thank you very much, uh, Bianca, and thank you very much to everyone uh, for joining us today. And before I hand over the stage to our coders, I'd like to give a really quick presentation of why girls should try, you know, explore uh, coding or why they should learn how to code. Why, why is it cool? <laughs> now, or actually not just coding it, to explore the field of ICT in general. So again, I'm Frey Sangil. I'm the co-founder and the current president of Player Tech Labs. We are also a startup. I think uh, we started in Natuto ako nito when I was in Hong Kong in 2013. So that's where you know my startup journey really started. But it wasn't until 2017 that we became a corporation. So uh, it's a long but very fulfilling uh, journey. But yeah, um, so I also work as a data scientist and an analyst consultant for various clients. And I am a self-taught programmer, or at least I started as a self-taught programmer. So for as long as I can remember, I've been very fascinated with computers since you know elementary school. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, and AI and all the technicalities and the philosophical implications. Now to start, yeah, to start my presentation, I'd like to introduce one of my heroes. And na mentioned po siya kanina ni, ni Ma'am, uh, si Lady, uh, Lady Ada Lovelace. And, you know, they call her the first computer programmer. Now, no unang panahon kasi, naniniwala ang mga tao na ang brains daw ng mga babae, noon ha, sabi nila noon, ang brains daw ng mga babae, hindi daw kaya yung mathematics. Dito kaya yan. So sa panahon na gano'n yung general na paniniwala ng mga tao, itong si Lady Ada, Lady Ada Lovelace, she studied mathematics uh, as uh, encouraged by her mother and she excelled in mathematics. She displayed brilliance. And despite many discouragements na na-receive niya, primarily because she's female, still she was able to make her mark. In, in history. So with the first time I read about her story when I was a kid, that was very empowering. Uh, so historians argue that Lady Ada was the first ever recorded computer programmer. Noon kasi, yung early computers, noong unang panahon, it was only designed to add, divide, multi multiply, yung mathematical, uh, basic mathematics. Well, yeah, puro numbers lang ang niya. But, 
Lady Ada, she wrote a manifesto which basically says na, no, no, no. Computers can do more than that. Like music, computers can produce images. And basically, she described kung ano yung meron tayo ngayon. So her publication was very, very detailed and, and it was so visionary considering yung time nila, 1800s. And it helped, her work helped pave the way to the digital world that we have right now. So yun, that's why she is a very... Uh, amazing figure especially for me as a kid now now the world she envisioned and duna tayo so we are now living in a world full of machines computers diba? we wake up we have mobile devices we use computers here and there and while of course merong cons pros and cons like lahat naman may pros and cons but we are also enjoying the many many benefits of computers and digital devices so yung phone, di ba, mobile phone natin, communication, we were able to communicate with our loved ones, games, we were able to entertain, be entertained because of games, di ba, smartwatch, yeah, na, uh, ano, na monitor yung mga elderly, so I've uh, previously had friends, so they had this uh, project na they were able to monitor elderly because uh, through smartwatches. So, madali nilang na-check kung yung heart rate ba ay mahirap ganyan. So, ma- na, mas nagiging healthy, ganyan. So, mas, pag may emergency, madali silang nakakatawag ng help. So, yan. Uh, laptops, di ba? Work, e-learning, delivery, yung mga online shopping natin and delivery services, GPS, lahat. So, yan. All of that, is made, was all, it's all made possible by by the digital devices and computers that we have. Now, coders or programmers, sino ba yung mga coders? So, programmers, uh, I, ako, laging sinasabi ko, they're the ones who can talk to machines. Kasi di ba, kapag halimbawa, may kausap kang isang tao, tapos binigyan mo siya ng instructions, oh, da, dapat, ito gagawin mo, dapat pareho kayo ng language, di ba? Otherwise, hindi kayo magkakaintindihan. Walang mangyayari dun sa communication ninyo. So, dapat pareho kayo ng language para magkaintindihan kayo. So, tulad nito, sa picture, sa drawing, sabi niya, ito gagawin mo, ha? Ah, okay, gets. Intindihan ko. Ngayon, programming languages, um, it's the same language, it's... Uh, uh, instructions. Yeah, that's the best. <laughs> instructions siya to computers or to machines uh, so that people, tayo, we can make them do things. So that's what programmers use to talk to computers. Okay? Open the camera. Okay? Open the lights. Close this document. Print out my name. Etc. Etc. So coders talk to machines. Now, because we are surrounded by machines, diba? Programmers play a very important role in today's world. Halimbawa, yung manufacturing natin. So if you go to uh, manufacturing plants, many of those are automated by machines. So the machines are given instructions by programmers through lines of code para mas mabdali yung pagproduce natin ng mga bagay-bagay. Mas maging available siya sa maraming tao because of automation. Next, Yung sa health and medicine natin. So if you go to a hospital, siguro may makikita kang maraming maraming gadgets, devices, computers. So hospital equipment, di ba? Research, what we, what they do to conduct research para magkaroon ng cure sa iba't ibang klaseng mga sakit. So they use a lot of computers and machines. And it's important that these machines are given proper instructions by programmers. So yon di ba? Coders. Now, Ito, naabutan ko to noon. So, kung may gusto kang malaman or if you want to learn something, noon, pupunta ka sa library, hahanapin mo, isusulat mo. So, lalo na kung nasa probinsya ka or hindi available yung specific book na yon or wala kang pamasahe, you don't have money, di ba, ang hirap makakuha ng access to learning. Noon kasi yung mga malalaking institutions lang yung may monopoly kasi sila lang yung may may hawak ng knowledge. But because of computers, because of e-learning, eto yung mga ganitong webinars, yung knowledge, yung information, pwede na siyang maibigay sa mga tao kahit nasa malayong lugar ka. But don't get me wrong ha, I love libraries. I, I love hard copy books. It just happened na information became more available because of the internet. Entertainment, eto. So nung nag-lockdown, ba, many people tried to 
stay sane and become less anxious by playing games, di ba? Uh, social media, nakikipag-usap sa family members, um, they watch videos, movies, and all of these are because programmer or programmers or coders made software para magawa natin itong lahat ng ito. And lastly, ito sa mga examples ko, pero marami pa yan, ha, is space travel. So, International Space Station, nakakapunta tayo na explore natin yung outer space. And, you know, the International uh, international Space Station and all the equipment, lahat yan, they're running on computers when they make calculations para safe yung re-entry sa Earth, kung ano yung lalabas. It's all aided by computers. So, and so much more actually, maraming marami. Computers are everywhere and they continue to open opportunities for us. Now, uh, na-realize ng marami, mas lalong naging uh, uh, clear <laughs> yung importance ng good digital infrastructure and knowledge nung nagkaroon ng COVID. So, mas na-appreciate ng mga tao yung programming know-how, yung digital skills, yung mga techie. Diba kapag magpapadeliver ng food, they use digital devices. When pag magbabayad sila, mag online shopping, they use digital devices. So because of COVID-19, mas na doble pa yung, uh, yung appreciation for knowledge when it comes to ICT or even programming. And uh, yeah. So yan. So amazing, <laughs> di ba? Ganda. The first computer programmer is a female. Uh, however, here's the sad fact. So globally, in general, uh, despite all of that, outnumbered pa rin ang mga babae sa field ng ICT. This is from the World Economic Forum's uh, 2021 report. So uh, lalo na sa mga emerging technologies like AI, big data, and programming. So researchers argue na in some places kasi, uh, marami pa rin na natitira pa rin yung many years of thinking, centuries of thinking na women are still inferior. So hindi naman lahat, pero meron pa rin. Uh, sometimes even subconsciously. So ang nangyayari, ilalo na kung bata, di ba pag sinasabihan mo yung bata na, ay, di ka naman magaling dyan or mas magaling yung kuya mo dyan. So ang tendency, mawawala ng confidence yung mga bata, hindi na sila magta-try. And if they, did, and if they don't try, wala silang practice, walang trial and error, walang learnings, walang key lessons, talagang mapag-iiwanan. That's why it's really very important that we keep on encouraging girls um, and, you know, encourage them to believe in themselves. So in fact, ako noon, konting side story, ako noon, um, again, I, bata pa lang ako, I've been tinkering with computers, marami ako nasisira, <laughs> uh, ganyan. Tapos when I was in college uh, to help pay for my studies kasi galing province ako tapos mahal mag-aral sa Maynila. Uh, I had to do a lot of part-time work and one of that is programming. So I code programs but para i-hire nila ako, nagkukunyari ako na middle-aged man with a tech degree. Well, in fact, hindi. Uh, but hey, <laughs> I make it work. <laughs> diba? That's how I live. Uh, but yun yung prejudice talaga na between someone a tech middle-aged man techy you know na itsura versus a girl na ano mas sometimes may ganun pa ring prejudice so that's what we need to to break and that's exactly why we are supporting these kinds of programs um yeah so but worry not <laughs> that's exactly why we're here why kaisipan is here and while uh Deped is here and mom uh judy and uh, and the girls diba? they're demonstrating because we're changing that notion so kudos lalo na sa mga girl coders so yon, this is my last slide uh thank you uh really excited to see what our girl coders uh, did mamaya kasi hindi ko pa nakikita yung iba um, and to all the girl coders out there or if you're just interested wag kayong matakot you know you, you have to try normal magkamali sabi nga ni Mom Judy Ann, just explore just be happy and enjoy embrace the learnings and you know let's see what kind of code you will contribute to the world so that's it. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you. And I invite you to check our Facebook page, Kaisipan's page, our website, Google Play Apps. We have a lot of free applications and games that 
helps you practice your coding logic and mathematics. It's for free, huh? It works offline. So feel free to check our page. And if you want to know more, please feel free to reach out at learning at layertechlab.com. And hindi pa po dito, this is just the start, di ba, Ma'am uh, Ma Maria? So if you are in, interested to hold more programs like these, I'm sure kami sa Layer Tech and my team, uh, we all started from, from, kami, from nothing. So we are more than willing to help you and assist you uh, the best we can. So salamat. Thank you very much. I'll stop this. Share niya. Thank you so much, Ms. Pray, for your presentation. And I hope we can encourage uh, more women and other people uh, in this session to get into tech for a wider social impact and creating more equitable access uh, for all genders when it comes to uh, data and data analytics. Um, so again, thank you to all of our three speakers uh, for, for today. Uh, so before we move forward in our um, program, uh, I would like to introduce to you some of two of Kaisipang young girls, two scholars of Layer Tech who is under the program of Girls Code. So thank you so much, Layer Tech, for uh, sponsoring uh, Kaisipan Incorporation and encouraging more girls to uh, be coders. So the first one here is we have Jill Angla. She is a seventh grader here in Tarlac City, who is also a recipient of the Girls Code program uh, via Kaisipan. She plans on becoming a game developer, and Jill would like to share her initial experiences in the program with this short video. Computers are important because they allow us to work, study, and make comics and stories. We can always play games and create new games with coding. Computers are powerful tools that we can search up any information that it has allowed us to bring people closer together and meet new people using emails, chatting, time, and social media. One of the most exciting things about the computer is that I can how to code and create my own software and games. It has been fun and challenging, and I have been enjoying it a lot. It is sometimes hard to learn of the syntax of the code, but it has been manageable so far. When I grow up, I hope I can be a game developer and create more fun games like Roblox and Mobile Legends. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Jill, for sharing your experience. The next Kaisipan scholar is that we have Jael Lawe, a consistent student leader from her elementary days. She's always exploring possibilities and grabbing every opportunity that she can learn and grow. Coding is really, uh, it, coding is not really her stuff, but her experience in robotics event where she had a chance to let a robot perform actions made her interested in basic coding. Also, she sees her brother code as they do modules together at home and said yes to the girls code opportunity. She's aspiring to be a surgeon in the future, but she believes that she can still do coding too, especially that she sees um, uh, coding in TVs, movie, movies related to medical fields using AI facilities. She dreams of becoming, uh, to create an AI with his brother and the future that can help her community as they always talk about it with their mom over meals. I would like to turn it over now to Joelle for her project demo. Um, good evening to everyone. Um, let me share my screen now. Um, once again, I am Joelle Pilaw Epolet, a great student. Grade 10 student from Baguio City National High School. Um, before po, ko po present po yung output ko. Um, like Jill po, I want to answer my the guide questions po na binigay. Um, why did I learn coding or why am I interested po? As mentioned po kanina, um, I was amazed po when I was watching my mother and my older brother coding po kahit parang hindi ko po naiintindihan pero parang it looks cool for me po kasi kaya yon and parang yun na rin po yung nagtulak sa akin na mag matutong mag-code Next po is uh, my learning experience with coding po um it's it was fun and exciting po pero meron rin po yung struggles and hassle po sa paggawa 
no sprites and other other instructions po na pinovide ng video. Your coding dreams of the future po. Um, na mention na rin po kanina yung um, plan po namin parang napapag-usapan po namin ng brother ko is yung to create AI na makakatulong po sa akin as a surgeon in God willing and God per perfect timing po. Tapos um, siguro po yung makakatulong rin po sa amin to make our works easier po. Okay po sa module 1, gusto ko lang po isyo, um, ipakita po sa inyo yung um, yung itsura po ng um, yung itsura po ng output ko and yung mismong output po. Yan po. Um, yung kay Kitty po, um, ang role niya po is ilagan yung bat and um, para manalo. Tapos once po kasi na natouch niya yung bat, magsasound po siya ng miaw and mababawasan po yung life niya. So para po matalo niya yung bat, kailangan niya pong magtagal ng 20 seconds na hindi po natatouch yung bat. Ayan rin po yung, yung instructions okay, bat po. So ito po yung output ko na naglalaro. Ayun po pala. Um, also po sa background, um, nabigyan rin po kami ng instructions na once na nanalo po, may, back, may backdrop po and text po na nakalagay na you win and pag nalus naman po is you lose. Um, proceed po ako sa module 2. Module 2 po is coding animation. Um, dito po ako medyo nahirapan kasi mag-drawing po tayo kami ng sarili naming sprite and mouse lang po yung gamit ko so makikita nyo rin po mamaya um, I'll show my time lapse na lang po doing my animation po ganun rin po yung um, itsura nung scratch ko po kay Allen kay Chu and dun po sa akin um, yun po yung instruction sa video nagagawa daw po kami ng tatlong sprite Before ko po pala um, i-show yung, ipakita po yung final output, makikita nyo po doon yung struggle po na altab ng altab 
from video to scratch, scratch to video po. Kasi mm, mahirap po kasi talagang sundan yung drawing since mouse lang po talaga yung gamit. Pero naging masaya naman po yung process and um, naging okay naman po yung output. So here's the final output po and last po. That's all po. Hindi ko na rin po masishare yung module 3 since kailangan niya po ng camera. And I have two devices po. Thank you po. That's very awesome, Rao. I really love all of your uh, presentations and you documented them so well. I'm so proud of you and congratulations on your first project. I know that you will go far and I wish that um, in the future, you will become a very successful surgeon and create uh, a lot of projects with your brother as well. So thank you so much for sharing your project with us. Um, okay, so moving forward, let's... Um, so for this portion, um, I'm going to share a short story. Um, so in here, it's a data visualization demo. So I'm going to show you a short project that I did uh, with a certain organization uh, that focuses on health. So just a little background about myself is that um, I, I am no way a techie person. Like when I was a kid, uh, like I'm a bit allergic when it comes to laptops or, or, or cell phones because I, I was quite confused by it. And growing up, like I wanted to be like the perfect daughter. I wanted to be a perfect student. And with that said, I was afraid to try out new things. So with me being, you know, introduced to computers, when it comes to programming languages, I was really, I was a bit allergic to it because I know that I wasn't going to be good at it from the start. So that prevented me at a very young age to try out like computers or programming or learning more about when it comes to data. But as the pandemic hit, um, like for the past two, it, it's been really quite overwhelming these past two years. So there's been a lot of information, a lot of data coming in. And um, like someone who's a young professional, I can't make sense of it all. So what I did um, was like, I came out of my comfort zone and actually learned about um, data analysis. So in data analysis, I was able to explore a bit, make a lot of mistakes, uh, failed a lot. So that was a, that was a really a big bruise on my ego. Um, and then uh, with that said, I actually learned like one of the most um, challenging things. I, lear I learned from so many great people. I made new friends because of this experience. And right now, like even at this age, I actually want to learn about more about coding and I hopefully become more of a data analyst or a data scientist someday. So with this uh, short demo, I'm gonna show you the Philippine Health Dashboard. Um, so here, hold on. 
there we go. So there was a certain organization that contracted me in creating uh, when it comes to um, health. So in this dashboard, I will show you about the nationwide healthcare system in the Philippines, the malnutrition cases, uh, nationwide persons with disabilities. And then later, I will show you about the COVID vaccine rollout here in the Philippines. So all of this data was actually curated uh, by some public health agencies here in the Philippines. So all of these data sets are quite uh, publicly known. So for the first one here, so all of these data are actually from 146 cities. So like when it comes to data analysis, you have to be very um, like explicit where you keep, where you got your data and what it, ano yung nilalaman ng data. So for this one, um, it's from uh, 2011 to 2019. So the default view of this is actually 2019. So in 2019, we know that there are 21,000 clinics, 894 uh, hospitals, uh, 3,723 diagnostic centers, and then so on and so forth to healthcare workers such as doctors, nurses, and midwives. So if you see here, human resources for health. So by profession, we know that there are around 87,000 doctors, and close to that number are actually nurses at around 84,000 and only a handful of midwives. We see here that in the public sector, uh, most of our healthcare workers are actually in the private sector. And then only a few of them are actually in the public sector, unfortunately. So through this chart, you can actually see who are the healthcare workers um, here in the Philippines, kung nasa private basila or public sector. So if you're a policymaker, you can actually see saan ba yung gaps na yung community. So for example, if I do a trend line from 2011 to 2019, and I just want to take a look at NCR, for example, the National Capital Region. I can actually see here, um, since 2018, we're actually declining when it comes to healthcare workers. It's been growing steadily from 2015 to 2018, but it actually drastically uh, got below in 2019. Now, unfortunately, 2019 was when um, the COVID-19 pandemic started. And since medyo ko lang tayo sa healthcare workers, walang, walang masyado nag accommodate uh, sa mga nangangailangan o sa mga may sakit. So that was the reason bahay nagkaroon ng surges. So just from simple two charts, you can actually create a story or create insights from it. So that's actually one of the, one of the beauty when it comes to data analysis. Um, so moving forward, um, like let's look at facilities. So from 2011 to 2019, st steadily increasing ang mga ano natin, health facilities, uh, majority of which are clinics. And then, uh, but when it comes to bed occupancy, of course, mga hospital beds ang pinakamataas. So also one of the problems that we saw in the COVID-19 pandemic, walang space actually for beds. So like when the surge came in 2020, Konting spike lang ng cases, no over, no overwhelm na kagad ang uh, hospitals natin. So with this chart, maybe 50,000 isn't enough beds. Maybe I need to increase it to 70,000. Maybe I could, I could increase the clinical beds. Para sa on a barangay level pa lang, na-accommodate na yung may sakit. So again, that is the power of data. So I hope like from simple charts like this, um, you can create um, insights um, about this and you can actually recommend this to policymakers. So all of these public data, all of these data sets are publicly available. Naman po. Uh, and then we have here, uh, okay, let, okay wait, let, let's, play, let's play around a bit. Um, so let's say 2019, but I wanna see all of the regions. So here are the top 10 regions with the highest number of healthcare workers. We see here it's actually from NCR. Uh, and then these are the highest numbers of health facilities also from NCR. And then followed by Region 4A when it comes to healthcare workers, Western Visayan, Central Luzon, and then Ilocos, Calabarzon, and Bicol region. So if we can see the difference from um, top one of NCR to top two of Ilocos region, medyo malaki yung difference niya when it comes to allocation of health facilities, which is actually a big problem. So nakikita natin dito yung NCR, almost um, 8,000 plus yung, for example, uh, health facilities siya. And Ilocos region only has 1,000. So ang laki ng difference. So if you're a policymaker, or, or policymaker, especially now that the elections are coming up, like who are the people who actually have plans in improving the healthcare system here in the Philippines? So this actually um, is also very telling because uh, yung mga regions na nawala dito sa chart, ibig sabihin, konting spike lang ng cases. 
kawawa yung mga kawawa yung mga hospitals, kawawa yung mga healthcare workers kasi wala silang facilities or resources to work with. Um and this and then um of course the importance of data is putting in, into it into context. So for example, healthcare workers per 100,000 population. Um so for example, sa Iligan per 100,000 population, I know that there are 2,000 um there are 2,000 healthcare workers. But let's break it down to uh, doctors lang. Sorry, medyo mabagal. So we see here, um, Manila na naman. So San Juan actually has the highest number of doctors against 100,000 population. So per 100,000 na tao, merong isang libong doktor, followed by Dagupan, Iloilo, San Fernando, etc. So it's the same logic that you will apply here in the next chart. So health facilities. So in general, health facilities, these are clinics, hospitals, diagnostic centers. But what if I just want to explore hospitals? Kasi dun, dun tayo magka-quarantine, for example. Ako wrong, actually, per, per 100,000 population, there are only 12 hospital beds that can accommodate. So with this said, we can actually improve ano ba yung, kaila, ano ba yung pagkukulang ng specific city at anong region. So, yun. so same with bed occupancy and healthcare workers. So ito yung mga bottom, yung mga... So I wanted to highlight this chart because um, like we need more women in STEM. We need more people... Uh, pursuing um, actually STEAM, like STEM with STEM with the arts. So we see here in Baez, per 100,000 population, halos walang doctor or halos walang healthcare worker. Kawawa, kawawa sila sa vaccination rollout. Kawawa sila nung for the past two years na walang healthcare workers na pwede mag-accommodate sa kanya or na-overwhelm na yung mga healthcare workers dun sa population na yun dahil sobrang konti lang nila. So we have your Baiz, Lamitan, because the Pitan, etc. So uh, ito pa yung, uh, yung mga computation ko in case, you know, how, how do they compute all of these numbers? So I wanted to be very transparent with that. So if you have any questions or if you wanted to correct me on something, um, ito pa yung mga notes ko naman. Uh, and then moving forward, let's go to malnutrition. So I got this from the National Council of Nutrition. Uh, wait lang. So unfortunately, very limited lang yung data set, the data set here that I had to work with. Alam ko, yeah, three years lang, 2018 to 2020 lang. So let's look at the latest one, uh, 2020. And we're exploring stunting and wasting. So um, also data from 146 cities. So we see here actually that the, num the highest number of cases when it comes to malnutrition is actually Vigo City. But let's put that against total population. So I just have to click here, prevalence. And then I know that Borongan actually has the highest number of malnutrition cases uh, in their population. For example, I, I just want to explore CAR. So I know that there are actually 2,000 cases of malnutrition, so both stunting and wasting. Um, in, in Tabok City in CAR, which is actually a 22, almost a 22% prevalence in their population, followed by Baguio City at uh, 2%. So most of the cases here are stunting or yung, it's, they're too small for their, they're, they're, they're too small for their age, kagaya ko. <laughs> and then wasting, yung parang hindi, hindi pantay yung uh, katawan. So the prevalence of stunting is actually 78% in kids and 21% when it comes to uh, wasting in their malnutrition. So let's explore all of the regions here. Uh, so ganyan lang, uh, you can compare uh, different regions with high numbers of malnutrition and then high top 10 cities naman dito with high numbers of malnutrition. So number one is Digos follow, followed by region three in San Juan del Mote and then Cebu City followed by Manila, Marawi, etc. And then uh, same logic applies from our first view, top 10 regions with a high number of malnutrition per 100,000 uh, population. So nangunguna ang region 3, which is quite ironic since uh, region 3 is the agriculture uh, sector here in Luzon. Pero sila yung pinakamadaming cases when it comes to malnutrition. So top 10 cities with high numbers of malnutrition, we have here San Juan del Mote, which is in Bulacan, um, so etc. So for this one, I wanted to see a trend line. So 2018, 2020. So the malnutrition cases uh, for a few cities, some of them are going lower, but some of them are actually going higher. 
And you can actually filter this uh, by region if you're interested. For example, I just want to explore region three. Ayan. So in general, um, yung malnutrition cases in uh, region three is actually increasing a bit. So if we see here uh, for this one in this fuchsia one, medyo mataas siya, bumaba na 20, 2019, pero tumaas siya ulit ng 2020. So we, we don't know ano yung correlation ito. Maybe it's due to the pandemic. Medyo, medyo nahirapan yung food resources. Or it could be other things such as socioeconomic status, education, etc. We just know that there, that na mayroong gano'n. Ano to kami nga to? Can you please help me mute? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay, we're at the last one. So PWDs. So I wanted to create this view because I wanted cities to be more inclusive to the ones uh, so my but ibang cities. So for example, I know in totality there are 157,000 uh, plus uh, PWDs here in the Philippines, but these are actually quite underreported. So this data actually comes from yung mga PWD ID. So I know that not everyone, you know, uh, pursue, not everyone um, avails for that. So may, medyo underreported to. But for this one, I can actually see uh, which city per 100,000 population ang madaming uh, specific kind uh, condition when it comes to PWD. So that can be deaf, uh, learning, mental, psychosocial, speech impairment, visual, orthopedic, and multiple disabilities. So um, I'll just share the link and then you can explore it by yourself. So next one is my latest project when it comes to the vaccine. Um, so as much as possible, I really, I really am an advocate of open data and I really want people to understand um, what is happening so that they can also take action as well. Okay, sorry, I'm <laughs> just All right, uh, I'll do this really quick. It's just one view. So, so far in the Philippines now, as of yesterday, we have 147 million jabs. Uh, first dose, second dose, single dose, booster dose. But let's put that into context. Like, it might seem impressive. Wow, 65 million jabs, ang dami naman yan. Pero ano yun against the total population? So it's really important to put that into context. So in total population, only 61% actually are fully vaccinated. And yung target population, which is 80% of total, which is being showed in the media, uh, mas mataas siya, 75%. And even now with Omicron, 19% pa lang against target population ang nagpapabooster and total population around 1947% pa lang. So which is quite concerning. Like even if we're fully vaccinated, people, need to, people still need to get boosted kasi napakadaming mutations ngayon ng uh, COVID. So having this number um, might inform some of the policymakers uh, when it comes to your local DOH. Ano mga kailangan demand na generation para uh, may encourage sila to get vaccinated. So, ito naman for age group. So, 5 to 17, 40% are fully vaccinated. And from 18 above, medyo mataas at almost 80%. And then here, uh, total doses administered. So, uh, ano lang yan? Yung total number of doses being administered. And for this one, it's the average daily jabs per 7 day. So, in, a, in one week, ilang, ilang turok ang nare-receive na mga tao nationwide. So, so far, as of May 3, as of May 3 uh, we have a 70 moving average of 151,552. So, it's a bit, it's a bit low since, our, since the target is actually 1 million. So, that actually ends my demo. So, thank you so much for listening. And I hope that I didn't overwhelm you too much. Um, I'll share the link of this. Uh, I'll share the link of this uh, with Layered Tech um, after, after the presentation. So, thank you so much. Uh, hold on, let me share my slides again. So we're actually at almost at the tail end of our uh, of our session. So for this one, I would like to invite everyone here to open their cameras for a short uh, photo walk. And then uh, after which we're gonna, I, I will turn it over to Ms. Frey to disperse um, the certificates to all of the Kaisipan uh, uh, scholars for this call. So with that said, can I invite um, everyone to turn on their cameras real quick? Morning, Doc Mel.
Ay, morning. Good evening, Doc. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, Ms. Geraldine. Hi, Sir Joe Mark. So we have a very exciting announcement by the end of the session. So I hope that you can uh, stay with us. So it's just going to be a few more minutes. All right. Sige pa. Uh, like I'll, I'll wait until five to wait for everyone to open their cameras. Five minutes, uh, five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so in, parang wala na mag-open ng camera. All right, let's take a screen. Let's take a, I'm gonna take a screenshot right now. All right, one, two, three. All right, one more picture. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I would like to turn it now to Ms. Frey for the online certificates. Hi. Um, hold on. I'll share my screen again. Uh, basic. There we go. So this is a generic. Ano lang, ha? Uh, because, by the way, we will be uh, sending you guys the gel. Si Jill, na, nabubulol ako. And of course, si Bianca, <laughs> ng ano, uh, hard copy of these certificates, including additional gifts. Oh, yan. So again, let me read it. Uh, the certificate of Completion, Learn to Code Self-Paced Coding Course and Workshop. This Certificate of Completion is awarded to Jill, Laue, Jill, Anglo, and of course, si Bianca. And we, all, we also have other uh, Kaisipan Coder girls, pero... Uh, in the future, once that they complete their output, they will also be receiving this. <laughs> so, yeah, please wait for your uh, hard copy of your certificates and your special gift from us for being brave. Kasi alam namin na, na sometimes, you know, lalo na pag uh, medyo young pa, tapos public na ka FB live pa. So, the mere fact that you you even had the courage to to show up is already very very commendable and we admire you and respect you for that. At sana po mara, uh, uh, magkaroon din ng courage yung ibang mga uh, yung ibang mga girl coders or yung mga girls dyan na interested to learn how to code to, to do try and check it out. So again, thank you and uh, hold on, Bianca, can I also share something? Wait. Um, I want to share my... There we go. So can you see it? So, uh, I would like to briefly share before giving, <laughs> sorry, Mom, uh, Mama Maria, just to uh, introduce everyone to the uh, learning portal of Layer Tech Labs. So you can go to www.layertechlab.com, create an account. It's for free. We have both paid and free courses, pero mas maraming free. Uh, free courses specifically on ICT and data science. Actually, para silang mas e-workshop rather than just courses. So may mga activities and uh, so we have for MSMEs, recently kakalunch lang namin ng Electronics Exploration uh, Learn to Code Hardware series. So the kits have uh, actual uh, yung mga electronic components when they're going to play around with, with their breadboard and their capacitors. So kasama na po siya sa kit. Um, I know my price jan, pero in partnership with some schools and especially if halimbawa po yung groups ay for girls or for advocacy groups, uh, many times we give them for free or for very, very low prices. Uh, we also have for the girls, si Jel and si Jill and yung mga iba pang uh, kaisipan coder girls, if you're interested, you are also entitled to this Python workshop for teens. So if you're feeling, you know, more, ex gusto nyo pang mag-explore ng, ng coding or Python, please, uh, your codes, may na meron kayong activation code, so it works, same code, it works on this as well. So feel free to check this out. We also have data mining. And like, para tulad ng ginagawa ni Bianca, so data mining workshop. This is for level one, for really basic. Uh, but they're using R. And then of course, ito yung pinakita kanina ni Jel, yung learn to code, beginner coding for kids and teens. So if you're an absolute beginner, actually, alam nyo ba, uh, 50% ng nag-enroll dito ay hindi kids. Uh, so, any age, pwedeng pwede po yan. <laughs> so, ayun. And then, I'm also inviting you to download the Parallel Coder Isikai Puzzle Adventure. Actually, it's under, uh, under uh, may ginag, uh, what do you call this? Revamp. So, but itong uh, existing current version, you can download this. 
um, it's a game. And then, uh, it's offline. So, kung wala kayong internet, it still works. Meron siyang mga mathematics, my story, my coding, puzzles, and logic. You know, just kung halimbawa, wala kayong magawa or nagiintay kayo, you can uh, work on this. And we've partnered actually with some education uh, education experts with this para magawa namin yung mini games in such a way na best na si, na si stimulate na yung brains ng mga players. So, hindi nyo alam, gagaling na lang kayo bigla sa natin. <laughs> so, yeah, I invite you guys to try the Parallel Coder Isikai Coding Adventure. So, that's it. And um, again, congratulations. And natuwa ako sobra sa mga demonstration. So, I will now stop sharing and give the floor to Ma'am Maria. Or Bianca, yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Frey, for sharing um, the advocacies and projects of Layer Tech. So I encourage everyone in the call to take advantage of all of the free programs of Layer Tech. And if you have any questions, feel free to message them on Facebook. So now I would like to turn it over now to Dr. Maria, the president of Kaisipan Incorporation, for her closing remarks. Agyamanak Unai, I feel rich with inspiration. Thank you, Ms. Lauren Likigan from Deped Car for welcoming us to this Girls Code recital. Dr. Imelda Parcasio for introducing us to Ms. Lauren. Ms. Judy Ann, who is normally in Rotterdam, for giving us an inspirational talk. Ms. Bianca for sharing your passion for the power of data. Ms. Frey and Layer Team Tech Team Wait, <laughs> Layer Tech team for providing the platform for girls coding. So today you heard um, why coding is important. It's important to learn because it teaches you and me. Maski lola, pwede pong mag-code. It teaches you important skills such as critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity. And it helps improve mathematics and writing skills, but it also gives us valuable skills in life. So some of the, just a quick summary of what the coding concepts are that um, our girls have learned and our future coders will, will learn. The first one is, the, it's also a vocabulary word, algorithm. First time I heard the word algorithm, natakot ako. <laughs> Pero, I mean, it's hindi naman pala nakakatakot. Um, an algorithm is an instruction given in order to complete a certain task and receive the desired result. So, for example, get ready to go to school. What does that mean? It's a series of things, eat breakfast, brush teeth, put on your school clothes or uniform. This set of instructions is what you turn into an algorithm. Another concept is the word uh, called sequence. Sequence is basically completing a task in a certain order. So back to the get ready to go to school example. What does put on your clothes mean? Clean underwear, check, blouse, check, skirt, check, pag maginaw, sweater. That's you have to do that in sequence. A third concept is loops, which allows you to repeat something again and again. It can be something you do every day. So for example, every day you go to school, tama ba yon? No, it's only from Monday to Friday that you go to school. You don't go to school on Saturday and Sunday. And then um, a concept called decomposition, uh, meaning breaking down problems into smaller, more manageable steps. So even kindergarten students, they can learn decomposition. We can ask them to break down their everyday routines into smaller steps. As Ms. Judy Ann said, make complicated things simple. A fifth concept is branching, which basically means checking conditions conditions which determine the choice that's being made. So in other words, making a decision depending on what is happening or what has happened. As Ms. Lauren said, if the food is good, swallow. If not, spit it out. So 
So again, a big thank you, Gracia. Salamat to Frey Sangil and her Layer Tech team. We love you. So girls, yes, you can. Yes, you can code just like Jill, just like Jill. What kind of code will you contribute to the world, Sabinani Frey? Go, grow, glow. Salamat ulit. Thank you so much, Dr. Maria, for those inspiring words. Perfect uh, words to cap off the session. So we're actually at my last slide. So thank you so much to everyone again, especially to our speakers, all of the kids uh, who came out uh, for today. So for our last announcements, uh, if you are in touch with a community of young girls or in touch with a community from the marginalized sector or community from the indigenous people sector, uh, Layer Tech is willing to offer free access to learning to the learning portal for coding to these people on the condition that there is someone who will facilitate and ensure each of the participants has access to the internet and laptop or PC to finish the courses. Please feel free to reach out to Layer Tech's Facebook page or Kaisipan Facebook page for more information. So again, thank you so much to everyone for joining us in today's recital and we hope to see you all very soon again for another program. Take care and have a great May the 4th. Thank you so much to all of our participants here in Zoom and on Facebook. So I hope that you guys have a great day ahead.